Hi, first topic in basic mechanics is regarding equilibrium. It says that when a body is at rest, that is, it is under static condition, then net force on the body must be zero as well as net moment on the body must be zero. To understand about force, consider this body. Write the forces on this body be R1, R2 and a force P. Let a force R3 be acting in horizontal direction and a force R4 in this direction. Now since force is a vector quantity, therefore we should equate the forces in respective direction. First we will consider x direction. According to Newton's second law, net force in x direction on this body must be zero because this body is in equilibrium in x direction. Therefore we can write R3 minus R4 must be equal to zero considering this as x-axis and this as y-axis. R3 is positive because it is acting in the positive direction of x-axis. R4 is negative because it is acting in the negative direction of x-axis. Similarly, we will sum forces in y direction. R1 plus R2 both are taken positive because they are acting in positive direction of y-axis. Minus P, P load is taken negative because it is acting in negative direction of y axis must be equal to 0. Next is moment. Moment is always taken about an axis. Consider a body and a point A. If we want to take moment about this point A, we must first think of an axis. If you are taking moment about x axis, whether you are taking moment about y axis or you are taking a moment about z axis or any other axis passing through point A. How to calculate the magnitude of moment? The magnitude of moment is given by the product of the force and the perpendicular distance from the axis. Consider point A in a body. The load acting on the body are P1 and P2. Let us take the moment of these loads P1 and P2 about Z axis. The perpendicular distance of load P1 from Z axis is L1 and the perpendicular distance of load P2 from Z axis is L2. The moment of load P1 about Z axis is given by the magnitude of the force which is P1 into the perpendicular distance from axis which is L1. Similarly, the moment of force P2 is given by the force P2 into perpendicular distance from the axis which is L2. Now, the moment of load P1 is marked as negative because the load P1 is trying to rotate the body in clockwise direction about Z axis and moment of load P2 is taken as positive because load P2 is trying to rotate the body in anti-clockwise direction about Z axis. So to decide the sign of moment we have to take into consideration whether the load is trying to rotate the body in anti-clockwise direction or in clockwise direction. You can take clockwise direction as negative and anti-clockwise direction as positive or vice versa. Therefore, the net moment on this body about Z axis at point A is given by minus P1 L1 plus P2 L2 which must be equal to zero because the body is in equilibrium. Now there are certain points that you should keep in mind about moment. First is, if the force is parallel or anti-parallel to an axis, then the moment of that force about the axis is zero. To understand this, consider the same body. Let the load on that body be P1. We have to again take moment about point A, but now we will be taking moment about Y axis. Now, as you can see, the load P1 is, it is anti-parallel to Y axis. Therefore, the moment of force P1 about Y axis is zero. As it is written, if force is parallel or anti-parallel to an axis, then moment of that force about that axis is zero. Now the second thing that you should note about moment is, if a force passes through an axis, then also the moment of that force about that axis is zero. To understand this, again consider the body on which load P1 is acting. Again, we have to find out the moment at point A, but now about x-axis. This x-axis and the load P1 are intersecting. Therefore, the moment of load P1 about x-axis is zero. As it is written here, if a force passes through an axis that is intersects an axis, then also the moment of that force about that axis is 
zero. The second concept in basic mechanics is about distribution of forces. Distribution of forces can be uniform or it can be non-uniform. First, let us understand uniform distribution of forces. Such a distribution of force is equivalent to a single load which can be applied at the center. As you can see, this load is actually equivalent to this load which is passing through the center. Now, if this load is F, let us say this is F1, this is F2 and so on and this is Fn. Then F will be equal to F1 plus F2 plus so on up to Fn. So whenever you have a uniform distribution of load, just remove all those load and apply a single load F which is acting at the center of the distribution. Now the second type of distribution of force is non-uniform distribution of forces. As can be seen, the loads F1, F2 are not equal in magnitude as you can see from the length of this vector. Now this non-uniform distribution of load is equivalent to two things. First, a total load passing through the center plus a moment about an axis passing through the center. That is, this, if we want to replace this distribution, then we have to apply load F at the center. F here is equal to F1 plus F2 and so on and a moment So these were the two basic concepts that we'll be using in our study of strength of material. Thank you.